Hello, this is Michael Sulak. In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can make a confidence interval for the population mean mu, and you can complete this process with computer software, but we're going to use this formula and do the necessary calculations the old fashioned way. So let's get started. Here is the problem we're working with. We have a new drug for arthritis. A random sample of 38 patients have taken this drug. Those patients had blood tests showing that their average pH was 8.1 with a standard deviation of 1.9. And we are going to use this data to create both 90% and 95% confidence intervals for the mean pH of arterial plasma in all patients with arthritis who take this drug. For this problem, our variable is the pH level of arterial plasma. We're measuring how acidic blood is and we have a population that's described right here. It's all the patients with arthritis who take this new drug. So this is presumably a large group. We could be talking about people who take this drug in the future. And to learn about this population, we took a sample of 38 patients. So let's take a second and look at our sample in this situation. We measured the pH level of these 38 patients. Our 38 patients had an average pH level of 8.1. And we also have the standard deviation of our sample. And that's given to us here. It is 1.9. And what a confidence interval is, is using this sample data to make an inference about our population. So our goal here is to make two different confidence intervals for the average pH of our population. Because we're not assuming we know any population parameters, the formula that we're going to use looks like this. X bar plus and minus a T score times S over the square root of N. So there are four pieces here and we already know three of them. So the only piece that we aren't actually given in this problem is this t-score here. So let's take a second and see where this t-score comes from. For me, this is a fairly visual understanding, so I've drawn a picture. I've shown a t distribution here, specifically one with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if you think about taking this distribution and marking off the middle 90%, those cutoff t-scores are... So to actually determine what this value is numerically, I need to know what percentile it is. Well, the percentile is the area below. So if there's 90% in the middle, that means there's 10% in total on the outsides, which means that each side has half of that, 5%, which means that we're trying to find the fifth percentile of a T distribution with 37 degrees of freedom. You could do that with a lot of different techniques. You could use a piece of computer software. You might be able to use a t-table. I'm going to use a function in a ti calculator. And when I do that, I get negative 1.687. And because this is symmetrical, this upper number has the same magnitude, but it's the opposite value. And the math of confidence intervals means it doesn't make a difference whether you use a negative number or a positive number for this t-score here. So I'm going to use the positive value. I'm going to use 1.687. So when I'm doing something like this by hand, I always start out by writing down my formula and then having room to work with underneath that. And the first step is to just put in the numbers in their right places. And notice it's the sample size here, not the sample size minus one. 
what we need to do is find the margin of error and then after that we're going to add and subtract. Let's get a little more room. So the next step is to find this fraction and when I multiply I'm going to have determined what the margin of error is. To four decimal places I get 0.5199. So now we're ready to add and subtract. I tend to view this as two separate small calculations. If we're going to actually write this as an interval, what you tend to see are these two numbers within a set of parentheses, the smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right, and a comma between them. And that is a 90% confidence interval. We are 90% confident that the average pH level of all the patients with arthritis who took this new drug is between 7.5801 and 8.6199. And we're also asked to find a 95% confidence interval. So it's the same formula. Three pieces are gonna stay exactly the same, all of these values describing our sample. And the only thing that's going to change is the T-score. Every time you have a different level of confidence, this number changes. So let's see how you find that for a 95% confidence interval. So if we change our confidence level to 95%, we do follow the same procedure. We're going to figure out these boundaries for a middle region, but now our middle region is the middle 95%. We wanna know how much is down here, which is total area on the outsides divided by two. So now the T-score that we want is the 2.5th percentile from a T-distribution with 37 degrees of freedom. If I'm doing this in a Texas Instruments calculator, if I round to four decimal places, I get negative 2.0262. So that's this lower cutoff here, and then the positive number is slightly easier to work with. I can just modify what I did in the previous confidence interval. I have my new t-score. This fraction didn't change, but now I'll have a different margin of error. Now I get 0.6245. And completing this 95% confidence interval by adding and subtracting my margin of error, from 7.4755 to 8.7245. And if you compare this to the 90% confidence interval, you can see that the middle is the same because we used x-bar in the middle of both of these intervals, but when we increased the level of confidence, we increased the value of our t-score, which made our margin of error larger, which ended up giving us a wider confidence interval than the 90% confidence interval. And it's like our parameter mu is a fish and we're trying to throw a net to catch it. If you wanna be more sure that you catch the fish, you end up using a wider net. So that concludes our example, making two different confidence intervals based on this particular sample. If we had gotten different sample results, we would have found different confidence intervals. And both these confidence intervals came from using this formula here. For a higher level of confidence, your confidence interval ends up being wider. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. This is Michael Sulak, and I will see you next time.